friends, Thank you. for our final speaker for this uh, riveting tribute tonight. We are honored to have Racheli Franco uh, join us all the way from the land of Israel. Racheli had a special connection with Rabbi Steinsaltz. She uh, is a pioneer of Jewish education and uh, their work were, was really parallel. But um, in addition to that, as we all know, Racheli Franco lost a son. Her son, Naftali, was one of the three boys who was kidnapped in Israel in the summer of 2014. The entire country, the entire world was searching for those three boys. After three weeks, they were found in an abandoned field outside of Hebron. Uh, two of those boys were part of Rabbi Shnaus's yeshiva, high school yeshiva. Uh, Naftali, who was, two, who was one of those boys, was one of those two boys was part of Rabbi Shnaus's yeshiva. So they also connected on that very painful channel. And uh, we are therefore even more so honored and uh, really thankful to have you here, Racheli. It's not the first time you're uh, with us at Congregation Batefila, but I think it's the first time you're with us in such a large forum. Thank you so much for joining us. And now the stage is yours, Bechavod Racheli. Thank you. Um... I think we're in the end of a very long evening. Um, and, and every person who, who wants to say something about, about Ravadin is humbled and feels uh, they're not capable of it. So I'll, I'll just share from a perspective of, uh, of some, someone who wasn't, you know, uh, very close personally and yet feels in, in a tremendous debt. And I, I must tell you in, in my circles, uh, thank God these are circles that are growing of women that joined the, the world of, of Torah learning that, that got access into Bet Midrash. The, the sentence I heard more than any other sentence this week was things of the kind of, I didn't know him personally, but I can't describe the tremendous debt I have to, to Ravadin. So we know for 45 years, Rav Steinsatz was working on, on the flag project of, uh, of publishing the, the Talmud. Now the Talmud is, it, it's translated, it's, um, it, it's scored, it has a Nikud, so you know how to pronounce the word. And, and, it's, and it's punctuated and it, 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 the, the, the Hebrew words are brought in a, in, a, in a modern Hebrew letter. And this all kind of seems trivial. I mean, there must have been something there because it took 45 years, but what, yeah, it, it, you must, you know, anybody probably could have done that. And just to give you a feel of how, how it is not so, to what extent this was un, undreamed of, unheard of, totally novel. I'll, I'll, for a minute, if you allow me, I won't speak of Ravadin. Um, I'll give you a sense of my, uh, my father-in-law, okay? You know, people that uh, eulogize, they, all, they always end up speaking about themselves. <laughs> so I'll say something about my father-in-law, he should, he should uh, be healthy for many years. In the beginning of the 60s, he, um, he, he was a mathematician and, uh, and he dealt with what wasn't even called at the time computer science. And he had this idea that through some uh, complicated algorithms, he can, he can uh, produce uh, searches in text, okay? Now, once this idea was born, he started playing around with it and saying, oh, so we can take the whole response project and this, this world that was only known to people within the guilds, the, you know, the, like a professional secret, things that, uh, thousands of books that only the top scholars, the Talmudei Chachamim, had any access to. Once you, once you do a text uh, search on them, suddenly everything opens up. Now, today, Whenever I have an idea, whenever I don't, I, I can't remember something, whenever I, I you know, I say, okay, Wikipedia, uh, the first thing I do is text search in, in my smartphone, in my computer. It's like, it's like breathing to me. It's, it's something I don't, I don't think twice of. 
But in the 60s, 60s it was literally, it, the idea wasn't conceived yet. You couldn't even imagine it, okay? And the effect of something that was today is so simple, then it was unheard of, was taking a whole branch of Torah and giving people the key to it. Now, this is what Rav Steinzels did with, with his project of, of giving us access to the Talmud. I, I think at the time, the truth is, I'm, I'm sorry I never asked Rav Adin, but at the time, he wasn't thinking especially of women. Uh, he spent, you know, this all started, say, 50 years ago. I think the, the great, uh, the great jump in women's Torah learning was 30, 30, you know, over the last three decades, maybe the beginning of, uh, of four decades. So this even preceded that notion. The idea was, here are people starting in LTCL and then going all over the world who the whole Torah to them is, is a locked garden. And it's not like once you have the whole translated Talmud, it's all reading, there's no learning. On the contrary, once you can open the gate, then the work starts, then it all begins, then you start to go in into depth, but, but somebody gave you access. And it was a world opening to, to first to Israelis, uh, once you, know, you can read, start learning the Talmud in modern Hebrew, and I must say in a very specific, specific way to women, uh, when my when my older brothers became, I'm the youngest in my family. So when my older brothers became bar mitzvah, they they each got a shas, not a shas for that you give a, a chasen on the day of his wedding, but their own book so they can learn from their very own book. It has special meaning. When my sisters became bat mitzvah, there wasn't you know they never how could they handle this shas vilna they didn't learn uh, talmud in school nobody taught girls talmud i mean my father did a little bit but so unbelievably just then the project of uh, of talmud of, of Steinzel started out and the way it was you would you would pay like a a, a subscription and every once or twice a, a year when a book would come out you'd get it home and my, my oldest uh, sister became bat mitzvah. She got a subscription to, to the Shas of Steinzel. The next one, there were already a few books. They, they bought the, the first books that were out already and the subscription. When I, was, uh, when I was bat mitzvah, there was already a whole shelf I could get and the subscription for the, for the coming volume. And each of us, when we got married, we, uh, you know, the, all of these books were, were handed to, to the new uh, son-in-law and, and he was told, okay, now it's your responsibility to keep this going. This was a key to, to, to the sea, to this hidden treasure that today, the, you know, there's it, so-called competition. Today, there were so many other inspire, uh, projects inspired you should say Schattenstein and Chavruta and, you know, a million other things. Some of them were, were, were built as, as a, a co contrary, you know, in argument with Rav Steinzal. Some were built uh, in its inspiration of Rav Steinzal. But it all began with him, and it wouldn't have happened without him. Uh, I, I can go on and on about that, but just the idea that somebody opens the gates to you or, or gives you the key to be able to start, you know, just reading your first, your, your first steps is an un unbelievable gift. Um, there was a lot said already, and I don't want to speak uh, too long. I'll just say beyond all of this, we'll be terribly, terribly missing uh, the person that tells us the truth in our faces. And uh, people who spoke before alluded to that um, in more than a little bit. But um, I, I think uh, um, the rabbi, the, uh, Rabbi JJ, he, he, sp he spoke about the, the tension between, between humility and pride and what you do with yourself. But it, it, by Ravadin, there was such cynicism, okay? He was, he, he was a real cynic. You, his, his humor could, you know, as, as, as it was described, if you invited him to, to speak in a dinner, you took a, a great chance. 
But in the same time, and this is, I, I don't understand how, it's almost impossible. He was so in touch with, with the depth of, of his own soul and of, of reality of an Akadosh Baruch Hu, that if he would be, get an Aliyah in Shul, he would start weeping uh, just from the words, Chaye Olam, Natave Tocheno. And somehow the, this ability to be a cynic and, and uh, sharp as a razor and, and having access to your own tears, to your own emotion, it's something that you usually don't find by one person. It, it, it's, to me, it's, it's like a, a great enigma and, and also a tool that I think somehow we, we're, we have to find a way to access. Um, when we, I, I, I'm skipping a million things I thought of because it's late, but when we hear such uh, eulogies, we, on the one hand, feel so humbled that we, we understand we're totally, totally out of our league. And, and, and it's even painful, you know, everything we're not gonna be, yeah? But on the other hand, we say, oh, it's, yeah, that word, you know, we're inspired. And, and we're just, we're, uh, it describes here, you know, all evening and, and the more you read and the more you know, something in the magnitude of Rashi, you know, the, the whole Talmud, the whole, the whole Tanakh, the whole Rambam, uh, working on the whole Mishnah, who, who does such things today? And yet, you've heard this story before, but I, I can't help by, but repeating it. And if it, this is one of the last sentences said today, rightfully it should be. This, the, the story about this guy I met that said, um, I saw Rabbi Steinsaltz on the street and I recognized him. And I ran over to him and I said, Rabbi, Rabbi, I read your book. It was so inspirational. And Ravadin gave him one of his cynical looks and he said, really? It inspired you to do what? When we hear such eulogies, we feel so small, yet we feel inspired. And the answer is right there. It doesn't have to be something huge. It could be something small, but it must be something specific that we're gonna go ahead and do through this inspiration. So thank you, Avalush. Thank you to the whole community. And I wanna say to, to all those that in different ways were pupils of Ravadin um, that they should, personally, and I said, I said this to Avalush personally too, um, make space for, for the lost, make, make room for the mourning and, and move on and do and inspire and et cetera, et cetera. But also realize that, that we, lo we lost something great and, and there's, there's grieving to do. So thank you.